the, the talk I'm going to have today is is kind of ho hopefully something that ha has some um, uh, some practicality there that will tie t to what you're doing. So we've had Walter here showing you that we have this phenotypic data that's been collected from the well, our potato diversity panel, and um, and we have the phenotypic data. What's also sitting there is our um, is our uh, SNP data from the 8,300 uh, SNPs. And uh, Robin's postdoc, Candy Hansky, has been started the analysis on that on that data. So she has the 8,300 SNPs for the diversity panel. She's got she's um, going to be working with the phenotypic data, and we're going to try to start doing some some association analysis uh, on that. So it's kind of work, work in progress there. And, um, and so there, this really is a, is a team, team effort to um, move, forward, move forward with this. So what I want to talk about um, today is uh, SNP-based linkage maps and kind of how do we get to the linkage analysis. And then I'll, I'll um, uh, I, I go a little, a little past that. And I think the, the point here to make is you know, we have our, our SOLCAP uh, uh, team of, of scientists and this effort to, um, to create the SNP-based map is, is, a, is a team effort uh, between uh, Robin, myself, uh, my technician Joe Coombs, who's uh, sitting here, Kim Felcher, a postdoc in my lab, Dan Zarka, uh, a postdoc, and Candy Hansi, all kind of working together. And so what we're giving you here today is we've, made all, we've gone through all this process to create this SNP map, and so this is if when you if you're going to uh, generate a map, how do you go through, take this data, and filter it down into something uh, useful? So we've got kind of a a procedure for you to follow, so you don't have to reinvent this uh, process. Okay. So when uh, uh, SOLCAP uh, started, we had one mapping population that we considered as part of our um, um, uh, uh, purview that we were going to um, that we were going to do the SNP genotyping and get the phenotypic data to see if we can identify some QTLs and um, and that pop population is the premier in Rio Grande and Walter presented data on that our other um, um, purview was that to open it up to the community to submit populations that we would then consider that we thought were of value to the community that we would SNP genotype and then you would have your phenotypic data and, um, and we, um, you can move forward with that. And so on this uh, list here are a number of other populations that have been uh, genotyped uh, by the uh, SOLCAP group. Uh, plus I actually included some of the ones that I've, I've done my, uh, my Myself, so we have Atlantic by Superior, for which is a supposedly a chip processing cross. We've got uh, B eighteen twenty nine dash five by Atlantic, which is out of um, uh, Craig Yancho's population out of North Carolina. Uh, we have a population here, a chipping population, uh, Wisconsin twenty three ten, which has been named Tundra by Kalkaska. I'm going to jump over this one for a moment. We have another cross here. Uh, tetraploid population that's a cross between Jacqueline Lee and MSG227 for uh, late blight resistance. Um, and then Walter has a tetraploid population, Juanita by Pike, which offers us some, also some chip processing. Uh, at the diploid level, we have uh, Shelly Jansky's uh, popu population that's um, being genotyped. And we have two other diploid uh, populations. And then lastly, we have a a, a set of 48 uh, clones from the International Potato Center that have been SNP genotyped. And I think that's going to provide some interesting germplasm comparisons between the U.S. germplasm and the uh, um, South American uh, germplasm that, that they're working with. What I'm going to focus on today is these two diploid um, mapping populations. And so you can see Robbins talked about DM, uh, you know, DM 1-3. And uh, it's, it's kind of amazing to kind of step back and look and say, I remember when Richard was developing his, his, um, 
monoploids for the purpose of trying to uh, come up with a, a breeding system that would uh, reconstruct heterozygous tetraploids. And out of that work comes this, this double monoploid that actually has ended up helping us for a whole different, different purpose, help for the sequencing, and I think it also helps for our, our mapping purposes. So to, to move forward with the mapping, we thought one of the simplest things to do is to start crossing DM to some other diploid lines so that we only have one parent segregating to simplify the, uh, the genetic analysis. So we, we initially uh, developed a mapping population for DM by 84 SD22, which is a Chacoense tuberosum hybrid. And then after we, the data came off the uh, SNP genotyping, we were looking at it and we said, uh, maybe we really need to have a second population. And so we, we contacted Richard. He had the, uh, the cross already in hand, DM by RH. He sent us the DNA and we were able to um, uh, uh, SNP genotype that. And so having two populations to work with, I think, is more informative than having just a single population uh, to move forward. 